Thank you so much. And to Ralph, I want to thank you for the special honor of being here this morning to kick off the Faith and Freedom Coalition Conference. I cannot begin to express how critical it is for us to come together and recognize this place that we find ourselves and where we may take an incredible part in the history of our great constitutional republic. One of the signers of the Declaration of Independence stated it clearly, sad will be the day when the American people forget their traditions and their history and no longer remember that the country they love, the institutions they cherish, and the freedom they hope to preserve were born from the throes of armed resistance to tyranny and nursed in the rugged arms of fearless men. That was Roger Sherman. We stand here this morning and all across America facing one of the greatest challenges to the future of our country. It is an ideological challenge brought forth from an incredible chasm developing because we have just done as Sherman warned. The resistance today must be one waged in the arena of ideals and principles domestically and with strength and resolve on the battlefields where our enemies present themselves. I want to talk to you about our American cause. I want to take these few minutes to remind you of the cause for which our forefathers fought and that for which we must now take up the mantle and to defend and secure our America for future generations. If you really want to understand the American cause, you must go back and understand why America was established. America was established if you look at the Declaration of Independence because there were grievances against the British Empire. And for the first time, there were some people that believed there was an opportunity to establish a country, establish a nation where people, individuals, can have rights and freedom. And that something called liberty was so very important. So where do we find ourselves today? Our American cause is threatened and once again must be defended. As we face these incredible economic times, if we would return to our basic principles of free market and free enterprise, we would truly begin a recovery. However, the ideological chasm we currently face has us believing that a bigger government, a growing public sector, larger debt, because of government spending are the solutions. We have forgotten that it is the American individual, their investment, their ingenuity, their innovation, which will set us towards a brighter day. We must set the conditions for them to grow our economy and abandon the belief that nationalizing our production is the answer. We must set the conditions for small businesses, corporations and businesses, our private sector growth. And that means reforming our tax policies and economic policies to inspire long-term sustainable economic growth. See, the American cause is grounded in unleashing the indomitable American entrepreneurial spirit. And it is anathema to the liberal progressive mantra, which Alexis de Tocqueville stated, while democracy seeks equality and liberty, Socialism seeks equality in restraint and servitude. The American cause was and is rooted in Americas as victors, not as victims. The American dream is not about people coming to our shores for policies of equal achievement, shared sacrifice, which is now the new meaning for redistribution of wealth, and equal things and equal homes. The American dream was and is about equal opportunity. It was Abraham Lincoln who concisely stated, you cannot make a poor man rich by making a rich man poor. And this insidious class warfare rhetoric is not in keeping with our American cause or our traditions. Our American cause is about defending our beliefs and we must never retract from those enemies who openly declare that they seek our demise. Our forefathers fought against adversaries who wore uniforms and represented nations. But that is not the case for today. This non-state, non-uniform belligerent that we contend with seeks to use our own constitutional rights and benevolences against us. They have no respect for borders, boundaries, nor the respect of life. We must identify them and put aside political correctness, which will result in our own destruction. 
our American cause. Thank you. Our American cause has and always has been on the side of liberty and freedom. We don't need to compromise it. We don't need to appease it. And we don't need to apologize for it. We must develop a visionary perspective for the security of our republic and not focus on short-sighted sound bites as a strategy lest we perish. It was President Dwight D. Eisenhower who said it. We must be ready to dare all for our country, for history does not long entrust the care of freedom to the weak and timid. Americans have never been weak and timid and shall never be weak and timid. For it was Alexander the Great who stated, I do not fear an army of lions if they were to be led by a lamb, but I would fear an army of sheep if they were to be led by a lion. America is a country full of lions, but now we need a lion to lead us. Our American cause was and is grounded in a faith heritage, a Judeo-Christian faith heritage. And never forget the words of Thomas Jefferson when he said, Can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God, that they are not to be violated, but with his wrath? Indeed. I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. George Washington said, No people can be bound to acknowledge and endure the invisible hand which conducts the affairs of men more than the people of the United States. We ought to be no less persuaded than the per perpetuous smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation which disregards the eternal rules of order and right which heaven itself ordained. John Adams said, We have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion because our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. The attack on our Judeo-Christian faith heritage is an attack on our American cause. Their aim is not just about separation of church and state. Their aim is to separate faith from the individual. And that is why the title of this gathering is so important. Because where there is no faith, there certainly will not be freedom. Our founding fathers knew that. And this move to develop a secular state in America is the antithesis to the traditions and foundations of our America, of our cause. In Psalm 11.3, it asks a simple question. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? You are here seeking the answer to that question. First, you must educate yourselves on our American cause. Understand its principles. And then secondly, you must recognize the ideological struggle which has entangled our America and must see the lines clearly and be able to articulate the viable solutions which will sustain our America for future generations. Lastly, you must become a lion and let your roar be heard and willing to fight for a cause as so many before us have done. You must never be ashamed of your faith and sing the songs in your heart daily, songs such as Faith of our fathers. They met the challenges of their time. It was a time characterized by the immortal words of Thomas Paine when he said, these are the times which try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of men and women. That was the beginning of where we are in America today. An America, a country where we believe in the rule of law, where we believe in economic recovery that does not come from excessive government spending, 
where we believe in securing our borders, where we believe in the sanctity of life and the traditional marriage as the fundamental institution of this country, where we believe in individual rights and freedoms, and where we must stand and fight for our cause and our constitutional beliefs. The American cause is not about imposing a will. It is about an ideal. And it is about the extension of that ideal in these times where we have to engage enemies that threaten this great land in the ideal of who we are. In closing, President Ronald Wilson Reagan said it so great. And he took it from the New Testament in Matthew chapter 5, where he talked about America being a shining city that sits upon a hill. Back in Florida's Congressional District 22, which I have the honor to represent, there are a couple of places, Lighthouse Point and Jupiter Inlet, where we still have lighthouses. And think about how lighthouses have always stood to guide a ship in troubling times so they do not crash upon rocks. That is our American cause. And what it has meant for the rest of the world is that we are a lighthouse which stands to bring those distressed ships of state into safe harbor. And if that light that is the United States of America were to go out, if the light that is the American cause of freedom, of liberty, the pursuit of happiness, the respect of the individual were to go out, then this world will in turn go into a new dark age. And it will threaten the future and the legacy of our children and grandchildren. But that, ladies and gentlemen, shall not happen on my watch. May God bless you all. May God bless our American cause and steadfast and loyal. Thank you.